The construction of Jiayu Guan cost a great deal in terms of manpower and material resources. The work gave rise to a number of strange and sometimes beautiful stories, legends, that have come down to us over the centuries. On the red plain between the Qilin and the Mazung mountain ranges stands the western terminus of the 6,400 kilometers Great Wall. In about 2,200 years ago, one of the Qin Emperor's major projects was connecting the fortifications along China's northern frontier into one more or less continuous wall. The wall as it existed then only extended as far west as eastern Gansu province. Oh, this is the famous post. This is Jiayun Post. And uh, back then, inside is a military station and uh, the general living there. And then outside is a market for people, you know, social around. But outside here, consider is outside of China. For only military can go out there. The core city, or called the Tram City, is also known as the strongest fortress under heaven. Jiayiguan has been praised as an unconquerable fortification, or none can rival it. For all the praise accorded, Jiayiguan, in fact, is a fortress of a limited magnitude. Its inner walls are only 640 meters in circumference with an enclosed compound of a bare 25,000 square meters. It is not only smaller than Shanghai Guan, but inferring in size to Juyong Guan, Zijing Guan, Gubeikou, and even some of the minor strongholds along the Great Wall. In its overall layout, Jiang Guan performs the dual purpose of attack and defense, being a battle-worthy complex consisting of inner walls, middle walls, outer walls, and mounts, plus the Great Wall and a series of beacon towers connected to it. This is the original Great Wall. Made of mud back in Ming Dynasty, and this mud mixed with the straw is holding together strong enough, especially suitable for the weather here. It's so dry. Actually, it's not that tall because it's the inner wall facing to the city, and outside, the another layer of the Great Wall made of a brick. As the main components of the fortress, the inner walls are 640 meters around. 156 meters long on the eastern side, 164 meters on the west, and 160 meters on both north and south, making the enclosed compound a trampoline. Built of compressed earth and mud bricks, the walls are 9 meters high. Their tops linked on the outer edge with parapets that are 1.7 meters high and perforated with observation apertures. The outer walls are surrounded by mounds and about 2 meters in width and depth. The moats are flanked to the outside by an earthen dike about 1 meter high. In case the enemy broke the outer city get into the court, then they would design the core city. What they do is they close both doors kill them right there.
used to be thousands of soldiers living around the wall and stationed here protecting the country. And right now, it's become a tourist spot and so quiet. Let's really enjoy the quiet moment. If I stop the car right now, you basically can hear nothing but the wind. The beacon towers on hilltops often played a key role in military communication in ancient war times. Since the Great War has always been a military defense system, so the location of each post is quite important. For example, here, so-called the first beacon tower is built right on the cliff by the river. In ancient times, once the enemy passed towards the border, the signal from the beacon tower would be sent by beacon, fires or lantern during the night and by smoke signals in the daytime. The first beacon tower is also being called the most dangerous post on the Great Wall since the number one, actually it's the last one facing the west. So it's a very, very strategic location for the military station. Beyond the southern, northern, and western sides of the inner walls stand outer walls, also built of compressed earth, whose southern and northern parts are joined on the western end of the Xilin Wall. At present, the general's office is only building inside the compound. The general's office located in the central of the inner city. The general who lived here had a great deal of responsibility to guard the west gate of China. During the construction of the Jiayuguan Pass, huge blocks of stone each measuring 2 meters in length and 0.5 meters in width and 0.3 meters in thick were in great demand. Builders cut the crude stones in the mountain. However, they were so heavy that there was no means to transport them over a long distance. By the arrival of winter, the workers had built a path from the mountain top to the Jiayiguan Pass. They pour water on this pass, which quickly froze. They put the large blocks of stones on the icy path, sliding the stone along it. In this manner, they got the stones to the worksite on time. In its overall layout, Jiang Yiguan performs a dual purpose of attack and defense, being a battle-worthy complex consisting of inner walls, middle walls, outer walls, and mounts, plus the Great Wall and a series of beacon towers connected to it. Inside each gate on the northern side is a smaller gate with a lower gate tower, which opens to a brick-paved sloping drive. 2.85 meters wide and 24.73 meters long, leading up to a spacious platform above the gate. On each of the square platforms stands a 17 meter high gate tower of three tiers. Each tier surrounded by corridors supported by red painted columns. One of the best ways to enjoy the world wonder is to drive along the wall on the Gobi Desert. There are some techniques that the drivers can experience and have fun with. The best time to do so is either early in the morning or late in the afternoon. The natural lighting can create various wonderful formats of the green wall.
The last part of Jiayuguan is the main west gate of China. It is also the borderline between China and the West. Unlike the other dynasties in China, the Great Wall in Qin Dynasty is not only for military defense system; it also created many opportunities for trade between East and the West. It is the main post of the Old Silk Road. By tradition. Soldiers and businessmen who went out of this post would drink three bowls of wine to show the respect to family and friends. During a long journey to the west, they traded tea, china, and silk, and brought back products from Europe and Middle East as well. As a tradition, back a couple thousand years ago, this is the last post for the military soldier get out of your hometown. You have to do two things: one, turn around, look back, look at your family members and your hometown. Second, pick up a rock, throw the rock on the wall, make sure you can hear the feedback. That sounds tells you, I will be back. In the next episode, you're going to see the hometown of the founder of the Han Dynasty, Shu Zhong.